Southeast Asia's digital economy is growing into a 200 billion market in 2022, and that's actually a whole three years earlier than predicted despite the pandemic. Um, that's according to this year's Economy Southeast Asia report sponsored by Google, Temasek, and, and Bain. And in the last three years, we've seen more than 100 million internet users in Asia come online for the first time. So very dramatic numbers. At the same time, we are seeing headwinds uh, facing the region's digital economy as well as risks to an open, open internet. Um, thank you so much for your time, Karan. Great to be here. Um, obviously, we saw during the pandemic, you know, all these businesses go online, double down on, on, on meeting customers online. Um, and I wonder if you can talk about, you know, post pandemic, what we're seeing in terms of how folks are leveraging in this region, the internet, tech, and all these new platforms uh, to help recover. Well, look, I think the statistics that you pulled out of the report that, uh, that we, we were proud to be part of, um, sort of attest to the fact that pandemic, the pandemic certainly saw a spur in the adoption of digital technologies going from, you know, uh, 100 million increase, so going from roughly 325 to 425 in the course of three years is a pretty dramatic increase in just the region. But it's not come to an, it's not arrested by coming out of the pandemic. What we're seeing instead is the further evolution of the technology. There are parts of the of the region that were not connected that now that they are are growing in their utility in their use of the internet um, and we're seeing other communities that heretofore haven't been connected that are starting to come online so really the base of the pyramid in in many senses is now uh, leaning into the internet becoming connected and we think that's a fantastic thing i mean the enhanced opportunity, the inclusiveness that that's generating in the, in the Southeast Asian economy is, is terrific. So, so look, thus far, we're, we're continuing to see the kind of expansion, the adoption that we've seen previously um, and excited about what we see going forward. Yeah, and we were talking just to me with airlines, we're seeing people come online for the first time, yeah. we're seeing people come online with their phones. It's so different here than in many, many other markets in terms of the, the potential growth. Yeah, I mean, look, the saturation that you're seeing in the domestic, in the, uh, in the uh, US or, 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 or West European markets, um, where there is obviously ongoing expansion of the internet economy, but in this region, you're not only seeing the expansion due to uh, new apps, new services, and so forth, you're also seeing it through the broader uh, adoption of internet connectivity writ large. So ongoing investment in infrastructure, um, ongoing creation of, of, of new user bases, people in rural uh, communities and whatnot who weren't connected before. That's great. At the same time, of course, we, that we're seeing all this growth, we are seeing around the region and around the world uh, restrictive policies, mm -hmm. things, you know, discussions over digital fragmentation and digital yeah. sovereignty. Yeah. Um, you know, we saw, for example, Russia last year try to or install initiatives to really control the Internet. Um, I wonder if you can talk about that and how real are those risks, especially here in Asia? And, and what does that risk mean to the, to the rest of us and, and to the digital economy? Yeah, look, um, if you step back, you know, obviously the, the digital economy, the internet uh, economy really grew up in a space with relatively, you know, little precedent for regulation and as a result uh, expanded substantially. And it's probably uh, not unexpected and in fact it's appropriate that governments would be thinking about how technology is impacting their countries, their communities, and, and think about ways that uh, that balance needs to be struck. The challenge that we're seeing is the one that you've alluded to, which is that that regulatory process is taking place in a way that is largely uncoordinated and is really sort of exploded. Um, in the course of the last three years, we've seen 1,300, 1,300 regulations adopted governing uh, the digital economy, the technology mm. space, just in the, in the APAC region alone. I mean, that's an average of one new regulation a day. Um, 
and these are regulations that may fundamentally impact how products are developed, how they're innovated, how they're brought to market. I mean, imagine that level of divergent regulation happening in any other industry. You know, an aircraft engine, for instance, that has to function or be built a certain way for one market, a different way for another market. That same set of challenges is what the technology industry is grappling with right now. And, you know, for a big company, a Google, we try to figure our way through it. We, we consider our mission is, for, is to make the world's information universally accessible. And so we work through the challenges of regulatory um, bifurcation, regulatory fragmentation. But for smaller companies, that challenge becomes sometimes you know, an insurmountable mm -hmm. hurdle. And um, you know, left with the choices of having to reconstruct products for certain markets, they would simply say, you know what, we're just not gonna enter in altogether. And that's really where you see you know, e economies slow down, you see uh, individual users not get the benefits that we've seen derived from the internet. So, so bottom line, regulation is in, not only inevitable, but important. It's something that we support um, and, are, and, and want to be part of. But we do hope that it can happen in a more coordinated way than we have seen happen thus far. And thus the importance of initiatives like the APEC gathering that's happening uh, this week or, or you know, the G20 gatherings before, all of which sort of recognize the importance of the digital economy, but the need to have some level of convergence, I think, around what those running rules are going to be going forward. Great. I mean, practically, what do you think can be, be done? What is being worked on right now yeah. to keep data and the internet and, and, and the economy open? Well, look, I think uh, there are initiatives that we see underway. Um, you, you know, recently uh, the, there was a, a, a multilateral initiative around the freedom. It's called the Declaration for the Freedom of the Internet, which basically laid down certain principles. A number of the uh, governments in this region, as well as the United States, were, were endorsers of that, which simply sort of set certain parameters around the importance of regulation falling within sort of what those guardrails are. And, um, and look, we hope that initiatives like that will be helpful. We hope that there'll be convergence around sort of a common set of principles, you know, principles of non-discrimination, principles of um, making sure that there's transparency in how, in how regulation happens. At the end of the day, again, to reiterate, big companies, companies like Google are gonna be able to uh, figure their way through this, but if, if you are a, um, you know, if you're, a, if you're an app developer, if you're, a, if you're a small company, a small medium-sized business, let's say, that's just developing an internet presence, um, but all of a sudden you're confronted with five different sets of privacy regulations, which we are seeing, uh, you know, around, around the region, that becomes an impediment. That becomes where the internet stops being the incredible generator of jobs and, and innovation that it has been we've seen over the past 20 years and starts becoming more both atrophying or, or becoming less innovative. And I, you know, that's not what we've seen traditionally in this region. We've seen this region being a, a, a place where innovation has uh, exploded, including in the, in the internet sector. So again, we're hoping to see some of those multilateral initiatives place sort of the guardrails around regulation and, and ideally establish some best practices. Mm. And of course, at the same time, we are seeing more restrictions on content mm -hmm. and free speech even yeah. uh, around the region. Obviously, some governments feel like they need to do that. Mm -hmm. some, some of that is government imposed. I wonder what is the balance and I mean, what does it mean also for Google? Yeah. Well, look, I, I think the first thing to s uh, sort of recognize is never in human history has there been a moment where so much free speech can happen, you know, so many different points of view can be brought to the fore than we have right now with respect to the internet. There is a, it is an incredible enabler, it has been an incredible enabler of a diversity of views on, on topics ranging from politics to uh, society, economy, you name it. Um, and we fundamentally, again, believe that is a good thing. You know, uh, uh, the, the, the exposure of, of people to uh, different ideas is something that we at Google pride ourselves on, on uh, being an enabler of. We are seeing uh, a growth of, of restrictions around content. And again, there are some spaces where we think that's appropriate and, and, and helpful. Take uh, terrorist content online, for instance, where 
uh, you know, we have uh, seen evidence of, of, of that kind of content and the industry has actually really stepped up in partnership with governments to take on that, that challenge. Um, uh, a forum called the Global Internet Forum to Counter Terrorism, for instance, which is the major technology platforms working together to figure out what that terrorist content is and make sure that it doesn't stay online. So there are good examples, I think, of the, the content threat um, needing to be addressed and being addressed collaboratively. Um, where we worry is the growth in what we've seen in terms of uh, regulations that really seek to limit political speech mostly because it is potentially uncomfortable. Um, and that is a space where you know, we as a company obviously are going to comply with the laws that in the places that we operate. But the question I think we really want to ask is, is that in the, right, the best interest of uh, the, 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 the global internet community? And does, is there a slippery slope there whereby, again, the internet fragments in ways and becomes a less useful um, uh, tool and 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 so those are the issues the tough issues that we're we're wrestling with We're obviously seeing here in, in Southeast Asia um, so many people Access the internet by by telephone. We're yeah. seeing 5g uh, You know all over the place, but at the same time We do know that the digital divide still exists and especially in, in many pockets here in Asia How do we you know where are we in terms of bridging that yeah. gap for people and making the internet and, and the digital economy more accessible to, 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 to the vast majority of folks. Yeah, it is. I mean, the, the, um, you know, the, the period of going from desktops to mobile-based uh, uh, internet connections has obviously led to this explosion in, in access. And, uh, you know, today with uh, mobile phones being a, a accessible, smartphones being accessible at a relatively low price point, um, we've seen greater availability, but yes, you're right. Uh, uh, access to the fundamental connectivity continues to be a barrier, and it's something that um, I think government and the private sector do need to continue to work together on, uh, whether it's on creating the broadband connectivity, whether it's on the fundamental infrastructure of uh, subsea cables, terrestrial cables, uh, data centers. Those are all important spaces where I think, you know, we've seen good policies in places allow for greater adoption, but still more to be done in that space. But I also would flag, I think, another key um, enabler of, of, of meaningful access, particularly on commercial access, is skilling, is, is helping individuals who, to this point in time, may not have been trained on how to utilize the internet. Maybe it's somebody who, you know, is, is, is a little older and sort of more advanced uh, in their career and is nervous about making that transition. Um, or, or children, you know, young, younger folks. And so we are deep believers at Google in the importance of digital skilling as being a core component of enabling that sort of broader access uh, into uh, the digital economy and uh, very proud of the work that uh, we've done in this region alone mm -hmm. more than 50 million people trained uh, in the course of the last eight nine years on digital skills obviously more to be done in that regard but helping people who you know previously may have thought that their world was the street that their store operated on to now understand that they can be connected globally into mm -hmm. markets around the world uh, is such an incredibly powerful story and one that we're very proud of. Great. I know our time's up, but I just wanted to ask you, obviously with all this economic turbul turbulence that's ahead of us, um, where, what's the outlook for the digital economy here in Southeast Asia? I mean, yeah. you know, people are spending less, uh, people are concerned about their pocketbooks, and we're seeing people now, you know, go from offline to online and back into the shops as well. Yeah, look, I, I certainly, uh, the, the, there are the same macroeconomic headwinds that, we, that everybody sees, but the reality is that the drivers of internet growth are, seem, to be, seem to be present. And, and, and you know, when you look at the, at the medium term, the ongoing adoption of technologies, the indigenous innovation that's happening in this region, you know, the number of unicorns that are, that are being created in the technology space, the uh, growth of developer communities, the growth of creator communities for content online. It's, 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 it's really, you know, you can't help but look at it and think that this is going to be a center of digital uh, growth, digitally powered growth for, for many years to come. So fundamentally optimistic. Great. Yes. Lots, lots to expect from tech here in the region. Curran, thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank you, Juan.